The jumping ring demonstration lets us take a look at a number of induction effects that are central to our understanding of electricity. At the heart of it is our ability to use changing magnetism in order to induce electric fields and currents. In this demonstration, we're going to use alternating electricity rather than direct current, which would have come from a battery. The difference is that alternating electricity switches from moving in one direction to moving in the other direction. And it is frequently referred to as 60 cycle, which is to say that the changes occur 60 times a second. This is important in an induction experiment because what we're saying is that the electricity is going to do the changing without us seeing any movement. And that will be a very important feature in producing the induction effects we want to see. The apparatus you see here consists of a big coil of wire surrounding a metal bar and connected to an AC power supply. The first thing we're going to do is take a small coil of wire with a flashlight bulb attached to it and bring it down over the central metal bar. Keep in mind that with the alternating current connected, we are constantly changing how strong the magnetism is here. So that would have been done physically if we moved the bar up and down, but it's being done electrically even though we don't see it happening. With that changing magnetic field, we are inducing a current which lights the bulb. The next coil of wire we have seems very similar to that first one, but it differs in an important way. The coil is broken into two separate segments. We can put both of them down together, the light lights with full intensity. But the interesting point now is that we can take one of the two halves of the coil, lift it up, and bring it down turned the other way. So we've got electricity trying to move clockwise in the lower coil, counterclockwise in the upper coil. The two effects cancel, and the light bulb doesn't light. And so the changing magnetism threading through the two halves of the coil generates equal and opposite electromotive forces, which cancel so the light bulb does not light. If we take the second coil off and flip it back to its original orientation, bring it back down on the bar, now both coils are wound in the same direction, and the combined effect gives us full intensity in a lit light bulb. So what we've seen so far is essentially the creation of a transformer. We are changing magnetism with one coil, and we are using that changing magnetism to produce electricity in another coil. We're now going to switch from coils of copper wire and light bulbs to single rings of aluminum. No light bulb means that there is hardly any resistance to the flow of electricity, which will amplify any mechanical effect that may be present. Aluminum is not a magnetic material. A static magnetic field won't attract or repel it, but with alternating current, we get a surprise. So now we've seen why this is called the jumping ring demonstration. It's certainly interesting that the ring jumps off of that central bar, but it's also very important because we've just established that we do produce magnetism by an electric current in the ring, and more importantly, that that magnetism is repelled by the magnet that produced it. The ring leaps off the central bar. It doesn't get attracted down. This behavior which is to say the induced magnetism opposes the magnet that produced it, is called Lenz's Law. The next ring we use looks just like the previous one with an important exception. There's a cut in that ring and that makes it so there's no closed electric path around the ring. When we place it down over the metal bar, turn the electricity on, we have a changing magnetic field, but we do not induce a current. With no current, we don't have an accompanying magnetic field, and the ring does not jump. We just saw what happens if we reduce the amount of current in the ring. What happens if we increase it? Well, how would you increase it? There's several ways to do that, but at the heart of this experiment is that we induce a voltage, and the voltage produces a current. The induced voltage is always the same, but the current depends on 
what the ring is made of, and what its electrical conductivity is. We'll continue to use an aluminum ring, but we'll cool it this time. We'll cool it with liquid nitrogen so it's several hundred degrees colder than room temperature. That makes it a much better electrical conductor. Almost all metals conduct better when they're cool. That means the same induced electric field will produce much more current. More current means more induced magnetism, which means more force. So what we've learned with these rings is that we can induce electric currents by changing magnetic fields. It is important not to forget that we were using alternating current. The alternating current changes the magnetic fields electrically so we don't have to do much physical moving. But first we saw that we could induce electricity in a coil of wire and light a light bulb with a closed coil of wire near a changing magnetic field. Then we saw that the same induced current produces an opposing magnetic force. And if our coil was light enough and had a low enough resistance like our aluminum ring, that force could be seen by raising the ring up against gravity and pushing it right off the top of the metal bar. And finally, we emphasize the point that the induced voltage brought about by a changing magnetic field can have different effects depending on the conductivity of the coil. And if the coil can be made to conduct better, we get more electric current and more magnetic force.